Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our today's video. Uh, I'm Shamil Alam. I'm a PhD student at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Uh, so the topic of our today's video is Josephson Junction, which is uh, a superconducting device. And Josephson Junction devices are nowadays very popular because of uh, the recent emergence of quantum computing and aerospace applications. So in this video, I will try to give you a basic overview of Josephson Junction devices. I will first talk about uh, the superconducting materials. Uh, I think we all are familiar with normal metals uh, where we have single electrons that gives us the conducting behavior. And we know if we keep two electrons closer, they repel each other. And as a result, when we try to flow some currents through normal metals, we see some resistance. And as a result, we get voltage drop and also we get power dissipation in terms of heat. But if we keep the normal metals below a specific temperature, which we call the critical temperature, uh, these two electrons don't repel each other anymore. They get paired and we call them a Cooper pair and they start to act as a single particle. And when we try to flow some currents through these materials now, uh, they don't show any resistance and we don't get any voltage drop across the materials and we uh, get the lossless conducting behavior. That's why we call them superconducting materials. And as you can see here, uh, for normal metals uh, in this graph, for normal metals at any temperature, we have some resistance, but for superconducting materials below a specific temperature, which is the critical temperature, we don't have any resistance. That's lossless conducting behavior. And another feature of superconducting materials is that uh, it repels external magnetic field. That means you cannot penetrate the superconducting materials with any amount of external magnetic field. So uh, there are two types of superconducting materials. The first one is uh, type one superconductors, which are uh, the cooled version of basic metallic elements, uh, for example, niobium, lead and aluminum. And the critical temperature of this type of superconductors is extremely low, which is less than 10 Kelvin. On the other hand, uh, type two superconductors are very complex metallic alloys and typically they have very higher critical temperature at least compared to the type one superconductors. The highest recorded critical temperature for type two superconductors uh, is 216 degrees Celsius. And another difference between type one and type two superconductors is that uh, the type one superconductors can be penetrated uh, by external magnetic field. So now uh, let's talk about uh, the Josephson Junction devices. So this is a two terminal device where we have two electrodes uh, separated by a barrier material. So these two electrodes are uh, two superconducting materials and they can be like the same material. And this ba barrier material is uh, anything except superconducting material. So we can use any non superconducting materials uh, as, as the barrier material here. So you can use insulator, you can use normal metal, ferromagnet and ferroelectric and any other non superconducting materials here. So we know, uh, as I explained, uh, in the superconducting materials, we have Cooper pairs. And when we try to flow some current between these Josephson junction devices, these Cooper pairs uh, tunnel from one superconducting electron to the other through this barrier material. And this tunneling mechanism is the main mechanism for the current flow uh, through these uh, Josephson junction devices. Now let's talk about the device characteristics of Josephson Junction. So the most famous way to explain um, the characteristics of Josephson Junction is the RCSJ model, which is shown uh, in the bottom left here. So we have three parallel branches in this model. Uh, the first one uh, represented by this cross sign is the ideal Josephson Junction, which is uh, the lossless conduction. The second uh, branch is the resistive branch which represents the uh, uh, normal metal behavior. So if the temperature exceeds the critical temperature of this device, uh, it will show some resistive behavior and this resistance uh, is, is that resistive behavior. And the third branch is the capacitance which uh, uh, represents the device capacitance of Josephson Junction here. So and, and this is the characteristics of Josephson Junction. You can see here we have a threshold, switching threshold called critical current. And if you apply a current which is uh, less than this critical current, you have zero voltage drop. That means you have the superconducting behavior. But if you exceed that uh, critical temperature, uh, there will be some voltage drop. And uh, that's the normal metal behavior. And based on the resistance values of this device, we have two different damping conditions. Uh, one is over damped and another is under damped. 
So for overdamped condition, you can see here the relationship between the current and voltage in the resistive state is quadratic and nonlinear. And you can also see uh, for the both forward and reverse switch, sweep, uh, the, they follow the same path. But in the under depth condition, as you can see here, uh, the relationship between the current and voltage is linear. And also if you have a hysteresis here, that means uh, you have two different paths for the forward and reverse sweep. And uh, to control these damping conditions, you can also connect a resistance in parallel uh, with the Josephson Junction devices. And you can change the value of the resistance to control uh, the damping condition. And you can switch between the over damped and under damped conditions. Now, uh, let's briefly talk about the applications of Josephson Junction devices. The most uh, exciting application is the quantum computing, where you have qubits instead of binary bits of classical computers. And Josephson Junction is one of the major technologies which are being used to design uh, these qubits. And the nonlinear IV characteristics of Josephson Junctions uh, becomes useful for the qubit design because, as you can see in the right figure, uh, that nonlinear behavior gives you unequal spacing between different quantum states of the of the qubits another application of josephson junction is the high performance computing because they are extremely energy efficient um, they need ultra low power and they are extremely fast and as you can see in this figure if we compare the superconducting circuits based on josephson junctions with cmos technology uh, you can see that cmos technology is completely outperformed by a significant margin in terms of both power consumption and switching delay. And as a result, you can see that uh, it has been predicted uh, that the Josephson Junction based superconducting supercomputers will be able to uh, achieve the Department of Energy's excess scale goal, uh, which you cannot achieve with the semiconductor based conventional supercomputers because you need uh, more power consumption than the uh, budget. And uh, another ex exciting application of Josephson Junction's uh, based circuits is the aerospace applications because as you can see in the right portion of the slide that deep space, uh, in deep space you have a very low temperature which is suitable for the operation of uh, Josephson Junction and other superconducting devices. Uh, that means you can uh, use this low temperature which is freely available uh, for uh, the superconducting circuits and systems and you can use those circuits in spacecrafts and it has been reported that if you use superconducting circuits in spacecraft design instead of the CMOS uh, circuits which are typically for room temperature operations uh, you, you can have better efficiency more reliability and it will also improve the design complexity of the spacecraft design for uh, like different aerospace applications. Well, uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you so much and uh, see you all in the next video. Thank you.